Hey, it's Aaron, and uh, elections, am I right? They're still going on, and uh, we still don't have a definitive winner, though Joe Biden does look like he is going to take it. Um, he has the majority of the votes. He still hasn't reached uh, 270, which is what he's needing to uh, reach uh, to actually win uh, at the filming of this video anyway. Who knows, by the time I upload this video, maybe things will be different. Um, but everybody is saying that Joe Biden has won. Everybody is running a victory lap saying that he has won. So, oh, and also you can probably see a little puppy bum in the background here. That's Lily. She's a sweetheart. Uh, but she has nothing to do with this video. So she's just going to stare out the window longingly and you can see her fuzzy little bum. Anyway, uh, so yeah, like I was saying, um, a lot of people uh, are doing a victory lap right now. A lot of people are saying, oh, Joe Biden won, Joe Biden won, everything is amazing. Uh, he hasn't won yet, and there are still a lot of votes uh, that have yet to be counted, not to mention all of the fuckery that clearly Trump is going to try to pull uh, as far as the Electoral College goes and as far as um, taking all of this to the Supreme Court, if he can in fact still do that. Obviously, there are complications, but with all of that being said, uh, last time I talked about uh, the election, I ended up making a lot of people a little bit mad. I lost a ton of subscribers, which is fine. I, I understand that once in a while when I tell people the way that I feel about things, my honest opinion, it's a lot for certain people to handle, right? A lot of people want to be spoon-fed the same opinion that they've heard day in and day out over and over and over again. And when they hear something counter to that narrative, they get upset, they get worried, and they take it as a personal attack. So in my last video, for those of you who didn't see it, I uh, basically compared um, Joe Biden and Donald Trump to professional wrestlers. And I said that they were working on the same team. Now, uh, a lot of people heard that video, and they didn't hear me say they are working on the same team. What they heard was that they're equally as bad, and they're just as bad as one another, and Joe Biden is just as bad as Trump, and Trump is just as bad as Joe Biden, and no matter who wins, it'll be exactly the same. But I just want to say... That's not what I said at all. <laughs> um, a lot of people, for some reason, when I say uh, that they work on the same team, they don't hear that they work on the same team. They hear that they're equals. And that's never what I've been trying to say. Uh, objectively, Joe Biden is better in some ways. I would say on foreign policy, probably not. But on domestic policy, he is uh, apparently better. I've seen a lot of things that he's done that has been better. <laughs> But that doesn't mean that they don't both work for the same team. Uh, like I was saying in my uh, last video, you have to think of this less like a political election and more like a WWE wrestling match uh, where you have faces, you have heels, they're going to battle it out in the ring, but at the end of the day, uh, they both work for the same company. They both go home on the same bus. In relation to politics, what I'm basically talking about is that they all, uh, all of these uh, politicians all get paid by the same donors, big oil companies, uh, uh, big manufacturing companies, uh, that big banks, that sort of thing. Um, they're both paid by those same donors. So they're going to inevitably do exactly what those donors want them to do. So the politicians, though they battle it out in the ring, right? Uh, at the end of the day, they're both going to end up doing ostensibly the same sort of thing. So even though there will be some change with one and some change with the other, uh, the majority of their policies are going to be the same. And it's not like I'm saying they're both just as bad. I'm saying that they both work for the same people. So over a course of time, either you will have overt uh, fascism through Trump or uh, a Republican, or you will have in overt kind of uh, unexplicit fascism uh, through a neoliberal. Because a lot of people think of neoliberalism as something that's not fascism, but the reality is that in our modern day, neoliberalism, just like every other version of capitalism before it, uh, is just the beginning stages to a more authoritarian, fascistic-like uh, economy, system. Right, So that is basically where everything is headed, uh, regardless of if you get it through the outright overt fascist or you get it from the in overt 
uh, less explicit fascist, either way you still have fascism. Now, like I was saying, a lot of people were mad about me making that analogy. A lot of people were saying, oh, well, you're just going to convince people not to vote and all of these sorts of things. And I would just like to say uh, that was never my intention. I always have said, if you feel like you want to vote and you think that it's going to make a difference, you absolutely should. I have never said, don't vote. Um, but I have expressed a couple of times in the past uh, that I think that it's virtually a fiction, that you're not going to really make any difference whatsoever, specifically because your vote doesn't really matter, considering that the Electoral College is the one that makes the decision, not you. And even if your vote did matter, uh, it doesn't really matter anyway, because 90% of all legislation passed reflects the views of the donors and not the views of the voters. But I just want to remind everybody that I didn't actually release that video until the polls had already closed. I, I was in no way uh, influencing any voters whatsoever to not vote or to throw away their vote or to do anything like that. I, I made sure that I released that video where I was very um, uh, skeptical, as you could say, against uh, voting um, after the polls had already closed. So I couldn't have influenced anybody uh, if one or two polls were still open, maybe if they were watching the, the video on their cell phone. Maybe one person walked out of line, but I really don't have that big of a reach uh, where I could affect millions or even hundreds of people's votes, especially after the polls had already closed. Um, so that's kind of a non sequitur. It's not really a real thing that actually happened. But I do understand that a lot of people get upset about hearing uh, my opinion on voting, that I think that it's not necessarily useful or that it's basically a fiction. Uh, and like I said before, that's bore out in the evidence. So if you think that casting your vote is going to change something, definitely do it. I've obviously said before as well that there are some instances when your vote really does matter. Uh, for instance, with Bernie Sanders. Um, if there is some sort of way to get a very left-wing uh, politician through the ranks of electoralism and actually get them in a position where they can make some sort of change... That's useful. And if we're able to subvert the electoral process, which is meant to make sure that you can't actually have a say, if we're able to just landslide the entire thing and force through a socialist candidate, that, that might make some changes. And I would never say that it wouldn't. There are some ways to subvert this system. Uh, but for the most part, you can't, right? That's part of the reason why Bernie Sanders didn't win, is because if he had of a lot of powerful people would have lost a lot of power. So they all consolidated together and made sure that even though the Bernie Sanders wing of the party and the Social Democrats and all of that uh, were trying to go through kind of a back door into the DNC to actually win the presidency, they squashed it immediately, right? And that's going to happen again and again and again and again. They're on the same team. A lot of people say that the uh, Democrats are more interested uh, in taking down uh, a socialist candidate than they ever would be in taking down a Republican. And that's the truth. It's because Democrats and Republicans are both playing on the side of capital. They both work for the same people. They both want virtually the same outcome outside of a few differences. Big differences in some case, but just a few differences that on a grand scale don't mean as much as the real differences that the proletariat has <laughs> with the ruling class, right? You have much more in common with your uh, Republican neighbor or your uh, mega-loving aunt than you ever would with Jeff Bezos. That's just the facts. Um, and something that Bo from the Fifth Column recently said was that it's not necessarily political uh, ideologies that is what's dividing us. It's a problem with our morality. Um, people that are right-wing or left-wing can still agree on things as long as we don't put political labels in uh, everywhere, mostly because those political labels have been propagandized to, to convince everybody uh, that they mean something that they don't. Uh, but if you look at things on a purely morality-based basis, um, a lot of people are going to take the side of the good rather than the bad. A lot of people think that even though they are taking the side of the bad that they're somehow doing some sort of good. People don't just do evil things because they want to be evil. Most of the time people do bad things because they're convinced that it's the right thing to do. The propaganda is thick. Most of the people that listen to the mainstream media or to basically any media 
uh, for that matter, is subject to a lot of propaganda. And the state has a lot of money wrapped up in that propaganda, so it's going to convince a lot of people. Um, actually, even <laughs> another YouTuber named Thought Slime made the uh, same point today that there's a lot of money being invested in that propaganda. And even though we have been trying our damnedest to put out our own narrative and to put out some sort of uh, counter to all of that propaganda, our little corner of YouTube, BreadTube or LeftTube or whatever you want to call it, is very small. People don't <laughs> pay attention to us as much as a lot of people might think that they do, at least not yet doesn't mean that eventually it won't grow. We've seen from the past that it would. So yeah, the media apparatus and everything uh, that works to produce that propaganda is much larger than anything that we can create um, at the moment. But we are trying to push a different narrative. That being said though, we have to start looking at the reality of this situation. Big business and the large multinational conglomerates and the capitalists and the billionaires they're going to continue to get what they want. And honestly, right now, they're not stupid. They're looking at the world and seeing that there is a major collapse happening. And they're doing everything that they can to consolidate and to liquidate and to gather up all of the resources so they can sit pretty and comfortably at the end of the world, which they have no intention of trying to stop. They just intend to profit off of it, which if you've watched this channel long enough, None of you are surprised about that whatsoever. So with that being said, yes, even though it will be, if Joe Biden is the presidential candidate, even though it will be marginally easier for us to organize and to actually do things on the ground level uh, without having the Cheeto in the presidency, um, things are still not going to be easy, not even in the slightest. We already know that Trump was an incredible magnet uh, for terrible bullshit to happen. He constantly had the narrative uh, in the media where he would make things worse and worse and worse and worse. And that got a lot of people motivated to get active, get out in the streets and to do things that we haven't seen in our lifetimes. Like I said in my last video, we are currently seeing the longest sustained protest, civil rights protest in American history. Uh, that's a huge deal, but we can't lose that momentum when Joe Biden gets into the office, if in fact he does get into the office and Trump doesn't do some fuckery to actually just take control again. It's inevitable, no matter what we do, that we're going to lose support from the liberals, or at least from some liberals. Some people are going to be on our side, and a lot of people are going to look at this Joe Biden winning situation as the cure-all for everything, and they're going to go to sleep. They're going to go back to brunch. There was nothing that we could do to stop that. We can try to convince them to come back from brunch, but it's going to take a lot to do that. And since a lot of these liberals and a lot of these bougie, let's be honest, white people, um, aren't actually materially affected by the presidency whatsoever, outside of them hearing a bunch of rhetoric on the news, they aren't going to be motivated to do things that would benefit the rest of society because they just don't have any motivation to do that. They're incentive is to just continue to allow the status quo to go on and make more money. That's what they've been taught to do their entire lives. The media probably won't talk about any of the failings of Biden like they did with Trump. You'll probably never see something like Twitter uh, censoring the things that Joe Biden says like they did with Trump because they're on the same team, right? Even though Joe Biden probably would release lies and bullshit just as much as Trump would, well, maybe not just as much, but we'll certainly do it, I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to see Silicon Valley or any of the multinational tech companies like Twitter, Facebook, or Google actually censoring what Joe Biden says. In fact, quite the opposite is probably true. So if Joe Biden is in fact president, the truth of the matter is that a lot of these liberals are going to become almost entirely unconvincible that the things that are happening in the world are actually going to affect them at some point. Um, and they're not going to want to do anything to solve any of these problems. They're not, they're not going to want to do anything to help save us and themselves. It's just going to continue to go on the way that it has been. So we're going to have to work extra hard to convince the majority of this liberal population that things aren't solved and that brunch is still canceled. It's, it's going to be a hard sell because a lot of them aren't going to want to push back. But 
there is a whole other side that aren't quite white nationalists or fascists or anything, but more anti-authoritarian sort of uh, conservative type folk that are probably out there right now looking at this whole coup bullshit that Trump tried to pull and all of these things, all of this whining and complaining and being a sore loser and all of that. They're probably looking at Trump right now thinking, holy shit, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, if they weren't convinced of that before, hopefully this convinces them. And maybe, just maybe, the more moral ones will have a change of heart and they'll see the light and maybe they'll come to our side as well. So hopefully uh, a Trump loss might gain us some people um, that are, you know, good people that just got mis that were misguided uh, and convinced of a very horrible, terrible, ridiculous thing. I know that I, in the past, uh, was a right winger who was convinced of horrible, terrible, dangerous things. And I moved left. And I hope that we don't ever stop the push to get as many people to gain class consciousness as absolutely possible. My mantra has always been, we don't just need to convince the liberals or the left, but all working people need to gain class consciousness. And we can do that if we work together. So there's a lot of things that we can still talk about that can convince a lot of people to still be motivated to push and to get out in the streets and do direct action. Obviously, there's still COVID hanging around and creating all kinds of problems and killing lots of people. The economic crash has not just gone away and a lot of people are going to end up evicted very soon. And we still have to face global catastrophic climate change because we know that Joe Biden still isn't going to do anything real to solve that. So there are a lot of things we still have to push for. There are a lot of reasons to still get into the streets. And there are a lot of reasons to get people organized and out there and motivated and ready to do things. So I hope that uh, everybody that voted feels a little bit better, that they have a little bit of that stress relieved now that uh, hopefully the Cheeto isn't in the White House anymore. Um, if he isn't in the White House, again, we still don't know for sure. And uh, I hope that this is a good motivation to get a lot of you out there and spreading class consciousness and pushing uh, all of your family, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, your co-workers to get involved and to get invested in local organizing because that's where we make the real difference these politicians are not going to save us. They're just going to continue to try to get more for themselves and less for everybody else. So keep fighting. With all that being said, that's how I look at it. My name is Aaron. If you do get a chance, please check out all of the links in the description box below. Hit that little bell button because you know that they're not going to tell you when I release a new video. And make sure you're subscribed because they're unsubscribing people every single day. And also, make sure you check out my Teespring. I sell anarchist merch. Uh, you can be very aesthetic and get an Anarchy A t-shirt or a mask. Uh, a lot of people are buying them. They say that they're really cool. I can't wait to get the ones that I ordered as well. Um, and uh, also, please uh, donate to my Patreon because every single dollar that you donate really does help fund this show because no capitalist business is ever going to help fund this show.